Uh, I don't give a fuck, bitch! Welcome to episode two of Rick's D Minutes, the show where we talk about each episode of Rick and Morty as it comes out. We had our first episode of a distant pilot, as it was with the show itself. Yes, yeah, right. And now we're here. The show's actually airing. I'm joined by best guy ever here. What's up? Oh, and I'm Digi, bro. This is, you know, it's not on my channel, so I should probably introduce myself as well oh yeah good idea <laughs> yeah 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 uh we, yeah this is fucking episode two of season three it's the finally fucking here, long awaited. It's been, we've been waiting for it and now it's out and i watch it and it was good and they put it right on adultswim.com so everyone can watch it which i really yeah, that's appreciate really cool. yeah it's um, great it's great i watched all of season one the first time on adultswim.com but i don't think they were doing them like simultaneous release before mm, this mm. I don't know if this was simultaneous, but it's the next day, and we watched it there, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Good looking out, fucking Adult Swim. It's the way to they go. know what's up. Um, yeah, pretty cool episode, I thought, to start with. Yeah, you think Wh- so? I was actually yeah, what'd uh, you think? a little bit underwhelmed. A little bit underwhelmed. thought it was a little... I would say... Uh-huh, Underwhelmed is a fair is a fair ter- uh, compared to the opener. I mean, certainly. that was so amazingly great. Okay, like obviously yeah. it was not as good as that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. What, what do you think? Go go on about your feelings in general. All right. Well, my my big thing about this episode is that mm-hmm. I feel like this, in some ways, is making fun of the biggest criticisms that this show has been getting. You think so? Um, yeah, because. What I see when people who don't like Rick and Morty talk about, particularly the fans of Rick and Morty, Mm -hmm. everyone makes fun of them for just, like, um, claiming that the show is super deep just because it's nihilistic. Uh Uh-huh. Like... Like, the, the parody that I've been seeing around of the show is that Rick just goes, uh-huh, nothing matters, blah, 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 and the fans go, oh, it's so deep. And um, <laughs> in this episode, it kind of lampshades that, because that's literally what Summer does in this episode. That is, is true. She, just, she becomes this really edgy, nihilistic... Um, edgelord, and, like, that's her whole character in this episode, is that she just, she becomes obsessed with nihilism and not giving a fuck and senseless violence, and, like, she just kind of embodies all the criticisms people have about Rick and Morty, and then the episode kind of looks at her and goes, like, yeah, that is shallow, like, she's just acting out. It's you know. so funny. I before I watched this, I I happened to be on TV. I was just looking for like a download. I I didn't find one, so I just went, went here. But um, like on the TV board where I, th- I thought there might be one, just like that, it was just full of those. It was just completely yeah. full of that exact criticism. And right. uh, uh, that's yeah. the big one right now. It's a big people meme. just that it definitely is. People um, I mean at least from the shit I was seeing, they were just taking that at face value and being like lol nihilism it's yeah and and nothing nothing beyond that you know it's just and that's true um that it definitely did lampshade that i just didn't feel like it had any real counterpoint and not not that the show really needs to defend itself on that front i just didn't find its arguments like like what's the resolution there at the end with summer she's just like eh may it's kind of like the exact same point that was made when um Morty was like, yeah, blah, 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 nothing matters, come watch TV. Just like, yeah, just don't worry about it. You know, it's fine. Like, things things kind of matter. Things kind of do I matter feel a little like, bit. I mean, I, I won't say that this episode, like, had a strong message. Uh-huh. Like, I don't think it did an amazing job of proving the critics wrong, if that's yeah. what it was going for. <laughs> but um, I feel like what this episode was trying to say is, like, okay... That's not what this show is about, though. Mm-hmm. You know, like, we, like yes, we go over the top with edgy violence and dark, brutal humor and nihilism. And, like, yeah, we know it can look goofy, but, like, the show is about this emotional side. Right. You know, like, it's always been... Like, what, what has made the show so endearing and interesting is not that it's nihilistic and full of violence. There's plenty of shows like that. Mm-hmm. If I wanted that, I would have them make uh, Korgath the Barbarian into a full show. Did you ever watch right. that? Of course. It was you great. Know? Like, yeah, it was For just fucking violence. You right. know, that's all it was. And it was a fun time. But, like, the reason people get attached to Rick and Morty the way they do is not because it is senselessly violent and nihilistic. Right, it's because... Course there's this more interesting human story going on underneath it. Mm-hmm. And, like, the fact that it managed to... What what I was impressed with with this episode, and this is the only thing I would consider, like, absolutely impressive about it. Like, otherwise, it's a pretty standard Rick and Morty episode. Yeah. But um, it's just the fact that it did manage to make, like, what the kids were going through and the wife feel like 
emotionally poignant on some level. Like, yeah, they, they're going through this, like, this hardship of the breakup and, like, you know, their parents are getting divorced and they're really trying to deal with these emotions and, like, it was believable from them. But at the same mm-hmm. time, managing to just shit on Jerry relentlessly. <laughs> like, everyone else, the way everyone yeah. else is dealing with the breakup is taken very seriously. The way that he's dealing with it is just completely shit on and they don't care at all. And I thought that was, like, w- such a weird dynamic that worked really well for me. I really do like the way they unequivocally accept the fact that Jerry's a fucking pussy loser and there's no redeeming qualities yeah. to him. That's just, yeah, that's just un- not open for debate. It's a closed That issue. is not what these kids are, are hung up about. Like, they're yeah, having exactly. trouble dealing with... Like, in fact, what they're hung up about is that they're frustrated with him. Mm-hmm. Like, neither of them mm-hmm. is mad at the fact that their parents are splitting up. They're mad that Jerry's not doing anything about they're it. They're mad that, that like, he's hanging around and being a namby-pamby piece of shit and like yeah. trying to, and he's not committing. He's not fucking committing to shit. He's just being yeah. a little bitch, trying to hang. He's being a fucking orbiter of this family, is what he is right now. It's yeah. very embarrassing, and he needs to 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 nut up already. And I think that's a really kind of fascinating dynamic for a family breakup <laughs> in a show. That like the kids are. Like, they're mad at him for the same reasons the mom is, and they're just like, dude, you need to either get the fuck out of our lives, or fucking nut up and do something about this, you know? Yeah. And, like, when they see that he's not gonna nut up, and then both, their conclusion is, oh, I guess you are a huge pussy, so, you know, maybe (laughs) stop hanging around us. Yeah. You know, like, god damn. (laughs) Show's so brutal to Jerry. It it really is. I love, and that, that, like, the way that it delivers that to me, through, through, like, uh, 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 Morty's whole quest of, of getting over the fact that his dad's a pussy. Like, I like yeah. all that stuff a lot more than I like those, like, and I know it was obvious on purpose, but, like, the super on-the-nose joke of the, like, you're a pussy, or, like, whatever that whisper was. Like, oh, yeah. I get it. That That's <laughs> fine, but I'm, I'm just glad that we were away from that really fast, because it's way more yeah. interesting to explore the issue through the lens of the other people in his life, specifically, you know, Morty and the gang, yeah. who are the interesting characters, as opposed yeah. to, to Jerry, who we all know is shit. We all get it. I'm satisfied with the amount of Jerry that was in this episode because I expressed yeah. a, a, a very strong desire mm-hmm, that now mm-hmm. that we're kicking Jerry out of the show, we commit to that, that he's gone and we don't focus on him too much. And like the way he was presented in this episode felt like he was not really a main cast member anymore. Yeah. yeah like it felt like he was just there. He was around a little bit because we needed a little bit of him. But like mm-hmm. the show is unequivocally shitting on him at this point. He is not a major character. He is there to be shit on by the show. I'm still a little bit wondering if that was like the gag of this episode to shit on Jerry intensely and that there will be some change to that as we go on through season three. But, you know, there's no way to know. There's no way to know yet. So how did you feel about the overall Mad Max parody world? Um, I felt it was, uh, uh, you know, I really liked the Purge episode. I thought that was a really great episode. Um, I, you know, this was a fine, like, parallel for what they were trying to, not a parallel, but it was a fine, you know, representation of, like, how Summer was feeling and the kind of world she wanted to live in right now, where she, I don't know, where she, like, has control over things in her life, as opposed to her parents' life, or, you know, her parents' relationship, where she has no control over it. So here's her, and and the same with Morty. Like, Morty is able to find a way to to have power over something in his life uh, by by coming out of this place, um, you know the the setting itself was cool. Uh, I like uh, uh, the the characters that were there. I guess you know who I didn't like uh, Buckethead Man. Just like yeah. that, w- he was weird. He was. Like, I didn't like his voice performance. Yeah, like he he felt he was weirdly in between trying to be like. I don't know, like, he was a little too deadpan, almost. Like, he's saying all this shit Mm -hmm. that's, like, supposed to be this, like, you know, like, he's supposed to be talking like one of the people in these movies, but he's got, like, a totally normal guy voice. And they didn't, like, play it up enough in either direction for it to work for I'm, me. I was exactly. not happy with his voice performance. I, I, the, his performance here makes me terrified that there's intentions to make this character, like, important or recurring oh, no. in some He'll way. He'll never show up again. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I hope that's true. Because, like, like, the fact that nothing bad happened to this character at all in any way makes me think that he's being set up to, to come back and just, like, like, like oh, my God. Honestly, this might be the worst scene in any Rick and Morty episode I've ever seen. That, like, mustache conversation about the helmet. 
Like, I know yeah. later on it got to the point where, like, Summer, like, acknowledges that it's a shitty conversation, but that was, like, a minute of my time being wasted on discussions about this fucking dude's hair and, like, the, yeah. the obvious relationship they were building up between him and Summer. Oh, my God. Like, that wasn't clever. That wasn't witty. It was just boring. Uh, it wasn't that long, so I'm not going to, like, dwell on it ruining the episode or anything. But, man, did I not give a shit about that scene. Yeah. I mean, that... That character to me, what I felt like while watching it was this mm-hmm. sounds like a uh, like an act like this is clearly a guest star. Yeah, like, exactly. He had that guest star feel, and I felt like this seems like a dude who probably um, like isn't in voice acting much. Like this is a, this is a normal actor who's doing yeah. voice acting for the first time. I just looked it up, and it's a uh, Joel McHale, the guy who played the main character in Community. Well, um, there you go. That's the reason why he's so weird and sucks yeah. and filled up the script because he's Which, a famous granted, actor. Great actor, great in community. Sure. Not exactly known for his voice acting. He has been in Bojack Horseman and uh, a couple of like he's he hasn't not ever done voice I mean, acting. He but he's could not be the a best voice, voice actor, actor in the career. world, and the the dialogue written for him was terrible because they were trying to fill space. Hey, and scene, like I yeah. I know okay, you know what? This is good because it makes it seem less likely that it'll come back a lot. But it does mm-hmm. like it, like this character was weirdly protected by like an aura of like nothing bad's gonna happen to this guy. I could just tell. I could just tell immediately from the way his dialogue was written that this guy was like special in some way, and he didn't earn that or deserve it in any way. No. It was it was weird and uncomfortable, yeah, I and I was, hope they don't do it more. I thought he was a boring joke. Yeah, like I yeah. got what the joke was, and I thought it was boring, and I didn't think he he was definitely the weakest element of the episode for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like this sh- the, the thing about Rick and Morty is that it does lots of parodies, and it usually either does them in a way that's like so like like they take the original concept and they do something even more inventive with it or take right. it beyond the impossible like when they did inception in like episode 2 yeah. with uh you know the like the, the freddy krueger meets inception that's genius <laughs> right. you know what if right. freddy krueger got into the inception <laughs> world like that's a good idea mm-hmm. um sometimes though they do a parody and they like seem to deliberately half ass it cuz they're like look we're not really here for the parody like it's just yeah. eh, just yeah. you know it is what it is it's there and Sometimes that doesn't work as well for me, and this is one of those cases where mm-hmm. I was like, like, they didn't even, I'm glad they at least didn't, like, mention that it's a Mad Max world, like they usually would. Like, Purge Planet, they continually know. are like, this is the Purge Planet, but welcome that's to Purge Planet. But that's what was so funny, like, they, they just used well, that Purge was funny to describe in that everything yeah. in that episode. Yeah, in that episode right. totally that worked. was great. Mm-hmm. I'm glad they didn't say, like, oh, we're in Mad Max world this time, because, like, it was such a boilerplate, like, Mad Max world world you know like they didn't do well, much with the mad max thing, concept though. it was so obviously uh fury road that i felt it yeah. was weird that they didn't mention that specifically i felt like That's... it's 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 got literally everything that Fury Road had. I mean, well, it's got the, I mean, it also has the Thunderdome, so that's Mad well, Max. Yeah, it's, which it's they just did, Mad Max They did name way. drop the Thunderdome, at least, so, yeah. you know, which they say, oh, don't you mean the Blood Dome, or whatever? He's like, oh, yeah, Hilarious whatever, you know. joke, guys. Hilarious yeah. joke. I don't know. Uh, that was all right. But, yeah, it, it felt like, uh, you know, well, like you said, this is a good idea for, like, taking Summer to a nihilistic world. Yeah. That part of it's good, but, like, the world in itself, I felt like this was one of the weaker parodies that Rick and Morty has done. I of, agree. like, a... Of a, of, a, of a world, just because the characters didn't feel right. They Dude. didn't feel like... Ma- like, the mustache guy did not feel like he was in a Mad Max world. And, like, mm-hmm. I the only part that I thought was genius was the very end, when the they use the Crystal Stone and it becomes just modern society, and it immediately yeah. ruins it for, that for was Summer. Good. That was good stuff. That was, a, that was the only part where I was like, oh, th- Yes, like this is a great idea, but they could have done that with other settings other than Mad Max, you know. Uh, and you're like, absolutely right about that. But like, okay, what was the what was the deal with the fact that there's just a king in Mad Max world? Like, wh- how does that in any way make sense? There's nothing about this that is at all reasonable. There, there just like is a king who like well, he is was the, the same, slave. That's, or, that's in Fury Road. There's a king in Fury He's Road. The, uh, uh, what's his face? Immortan Joe is like their warlord god king. Like this is just yeah. some like, some like. Oh yeah, that. What, what is that? Yeah, I, total. Well, that was that's like a from, total left turn. Like they just went from yeah. Fury Road world into like medieval world. How did that happen? So, and why? And what the so fuck? So it was that. 
the arm that Morty had yeah. had a vengeance because it had it had, had its village burned down. Right. And that was at the the behest of some king. And yeah, there's just like a king in a castle. Like, that was also really weird. <laughs> Was, I don't know. Uh, I I haven't seen all the Mad Max movies. I don't uh-huh. know if that's a thing in in the first one. Like I've seen Road Warrior <laughs> and I've seen is. most of Thunderdome and all of Fury Road, but What's there's no, no right kings there? in any of those. You know, I'm um, looking at the environments they're in right now, and it's like just a fucking fantasy castle place. It just it's so not yeah. Mad Max. Again, yeah, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe this wasn't a Mad Max, but it feels bizarre and weird, and I hate it. That is a strange thing. Um, yeah, but I mean. Yeah, there's also definitely that elements of this episode that are less wasn't strong. Funny. It was just not. Yeah, the king guy. Yeah, he they didn't do anything with him. Yeah. Um. There's okay, but here's the thing: like all that stuff is kind of not that important. Mm-hmm. You know, those are like, yeah, okay, it's it's not the best, you know, but it's right. fine, it's serviceable. The one thing that did actually actively bother me throughout this episode is that the way this plot pl- uh, played out should not be possible with Hmm. Rick's powers. Like, there are so many moments he could have just shot a portal gun and it would be over. Oh, uh, yeah, I hear you. why does he need to hatch a scheme to steal this rock? They could have just grabbed the rock and left. Like, that's something... We just... In episode one of this season, Rick destroyed the world government (laughs) while simultaneously Uh. kicking Jerry out of his house all in one fell swoop. And he, he did it, like... He's the biggest schemer in the whole world, and he has to, like, fumble and bullshit his way through trying to get this rock. I don't understand why he didn't just kill everyone. Um, like, yeah. This is a guy who doesn't... He, like, at, at the start of the episode, he's, like, about to leave Summer on the planet. And he tells Morty, <laughs> like, oh, you've got infinite sisters, but, you know, I don't want to hear you bitch, so I'll save this one. And then ten seconds later, he sees, like, this big rock that he wants, and he doesn't just murder everyone and take it, like... Really? That yeah. seems like something he would do, you know? They explain so, that away with the one line of, like, there's too much heat on it. Uh, yeah. Pretty, what? pretty weak excuse. No. Pretty fucking weak excuse. Too many, like, there's there's also a moment where they try to excuse, where, like, when he's in the car with the, the other two, and he says, you know, uh, I've got a portal gun, and I could just leave you guys here. And mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, but you could also just shoot the, like, couldn't you just teleport them? Like, I know you can use this for more than what you're doing right now. Like, yeah. It just felt very forced to me that Rick had to be in this scenario where he has to, like, oh, I gotta sneak around. And I'm like, you don't have to sneak around. We know you don't have to sneak around, you know? Again, Mm -hmm. I I think everything in this episode is facilitating something that I do like. I like the story with Summer and Morty. I love the Morty's arm subplot. I thought that was the best part of the episode. That shit was hilarious. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. Um... Yeah, I don't know. It was one of those things that uh, I did enjoy it as it was happening. It just kind of fell a little flat for me in terms of the humor. This whole episode I found pretty darn unfunny overall, like compared to a normal episode. I don't know. I felt like the wit was just dulled down in general. Maybe for this like cameo of this other character going on or something. But I liked what they did with the arm. I thought it was funny that there'd be a sentient arm that just goes on a rampage yeah. to get vengeance for like its its I, burned family and, and I really the like the way uh-huh. that like the relationship between Morty and the arm develops yeah. and how it like becomes more and more because su- at first it's just like a a gag that like mm-hmm. the arm remembers fighting. So it punches out Rick and it's just like a really strong arm. And then it goes and it just murders everybody and then as morty like comes to understand this feeling of brutality and like wanting this as a way to vent like he can communicate more deeply with his arm and then like the arm goes on this whole journey to resolve its own conflicts that have been established so who, who knows how long ago and like you know the the scene where morty drowns the king And, like, he's just, like, talking to Rick while drowning the king Mm. with this big, beefy arm. And the arm goes away because it's satisfied, but it's not, (laughs) he's not actually dead. And then Rick helps him to, like, finish the job. That was great to me. That that was a good ending. And and I love the fact that this whole thing kind of hinges on this, like, uh, incredibly vague notion of muscle memory, which is not a real thing. And, like, (laughs) that's, like, the joke that this is all propped on. Now, that's funny. That I like a lot. that's great. (laughs) <laughs> um, that's my favorite thing. The arm thing is the best part. I, and, and again, I like Summers. I like, 
I like that Summer's development, again, seems like an answer to the criticism of the show. That, yeah, like, yeah. oh, it's just nihilistic bullshit. And, like, that's literally what she is. And she just becomes this, like, total hard ass who's murdering everybody. And then, like, you know, because it felt like this is a natural progression for Summer. We've seen her continually mm-hmm. get more and more into this work, you know. But she's gotten to a point where it's self-destructive and not really smart. And, yeah, you know, Rick is... Rick is... Will never take these two as actual pupils. That will never happen. Mm-hmm. He will give them advice along the way. He will give affirmation when they do something that he thinks is cool. And he will give consternation when they're in his way. But he will never just tell Summer, like, hey, um, you're acting retarded. Act this way. He'll just watch and be like, oh, she's going to get herself killed. Fuck her. You know, like his attitude towards her is really funny to me that like when he sees her like, oh, I'm going to hang back and fucking fight these guys. He's just like, well, fuck her. Let's get out of here. You know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And classic um, shit. Yeah. It's it's fun. This show walks such a tightrope for me where like uh, I think I discussed this on the last episode that like I'm not really big into like glib violence most of the time. Mm -hmm. But this show manages to do it in just such a way where like, I don't know. It never, like, offends me. Like, it can be insanely turbo-violent, but I always feel like there's something behind it. Well, you know, it's, you know? it's a combination of, uh, you know, because this is a cartoon, I, I feel like they can get away with that right. stuff. Like, I, I'm never, like, disgusted or anything on, on like, a super right. deep level by the shit I see. I mean, it's actually, sometimes, like uh, like the, the rape of Morty, like that, or the almost yeah. rape of Morty. Now, that's a disturbing scene. But that's scene. supposed to be disturbing, and it's and presented it was great, that way. And they did you it know, just right. It's not right. glib at all. Exactly. And that's, it's all about the, the attitude. Thing. It's the attitude that frames right. the everything. Yeah, that's what. Like, I don't think they've ever done a violent scene where it was like the wrong person dying for the wrong reason. You know, Mm -hmm. like if if they just, for instance, like had Jerry just like blow up or something grossly like that, and then everyone was like, "Oh well, fuck him." It'd be like, really, that's how you're gonna, yeah. But but shitting on Jerry constantly is fine because like Jerry does deserve it. Like he is a shit. You know, so like it, there is satisfaction (laughs) in watching the whole show piss on him, but it does so in a way that's not like cruel and unusual, you Mm -hmm. know, like the dog eating his welfare check at the end. Like he gives it to the dog. That was funny. That was, you know, like he just pussies out as he always does. Of course, like on the, if, if you're thinking of it, like at first I'm thinking, okay, this is like cosmic level of like fucking with him, but like, then mm-hmm. it's hi- it's him who ultimately does it. Like, if the dog had just come up and eaten the welfare check, it wouldn't have been that funny. It's just like, okay, whatever, we get it. You're shitting on Jerry. But the fact that he gives it to the dog, it's just like, what are you doing? You, know you I- fucking pathetic idiot. I think about this a lot. I think about the fact that I could totally stomp a dog to death if it ever attacked mm-hmm. me. I think about that because uh, people yeah. always talk about dogs I'd sticking them on do people. That. I could. To- I, I love dogs and would never <laughs> want to do it unless necessary. <laughs> but I could totally stomp a dog. I could. I could beat yeah. a dog. I'm just saying, Jerry, you could have beat that dog, you pansy bitch. That was. <laughs> <laughs> you could have taken him. I know he could have. Yeah, that was. That was good. That was good shit. That yeah. was like that was like the good answer to like the first uh, joke that was like the little ah, you're a loser or whatever. Yeah, that didn't make me laugh. At the end, it did. So you know what? Even that joke, I suppose, did have like a payoff to it at the end. Right. So yeah, fair enough. I didn't completely understand the scene where Summer gave him the skull. Yeah, I wasn't sure what they communicated to one another. I didn't know what Jerry was getting at when he was like, wh- like, why is he like? Eh, nothing like is he just getting black pilled yeah. by his divorce now and he also I, but like, i just did, was on yeah go on go on i thought maybe he just didn't understand and was just like okay whatever you know but, but like but then he, he said attitude, something though. like something was going on there yeah i didn't get it that scene was confusing for me i'm legit yeah i watched it twice and i am baffled by what the fuck they attempted to communicate there yeah um, Did you like the uh, the little Robo Morty becoming sentient and wanting life? You know what that you was pretty that? fun. I like. Yeah, I like. I like the. That's another one of those things that this show does an amazing job of of like just throwing in like high level yeah. sci fi concepts yeah. that other entire shows would be based on, and yeah. just having it as like a one off <laughs> gag in the yeah. background, like you know this idea that that Rick's. Which, I mean, granted, they've done this exact joke before when uh-huh. he built the butter passing robot. And yeah, it was that's like, right, that's right. you know, what is my purpose? And he's like, you pass butter. <laughs> and that was probably a better executed version of the joke. Better but, and you know. speedier. Yeah, but, but this, this was, was still, still all right. 
Yeah, I, I liked, liked it. What I like about this joke is mostly the part when they all leave and then the mom's like confused about the two different versions because she's like want to go run in a stream and he's like no what the fuck are you talking about i did like <laughs> I that a- and I, I, just, yeah. I you know i just feel a, a need to say like okay she's like a, she's she is there's something wrong with this lady that she's not asking questions about what's going on here and i i suppose that i this this has been well documented by now that she yeah. will just excuse anything that her dad does that her dad she does, just yeah. will Tune that shit out. She's she's hashtag damaged for sure. Yeah, and she's an alcoholic. Well, that's so true. I'm that. sure that's related. Yeah. Yeah, I really love her. I love her character. I can't say that I love her. I I, I want more out of her. I I like her in her position more. in the story as this like poor, poor woman who's been so emotionally manipulated by her her evil father. Uh, well, not yeah. evil, but you know, basically evil. Uh, yeah, I like that a lot. But uh, even Jerry, I think, has more character to him at this point. She hasn't, like, like she's more been such, character, like, but, yeah. y- you know, he's always been, like, the guy who you're like, oh, fuck off. Yeah, you know? no, you're right, you're right. Uh, but, and I don't even know if I necessarily, like, want a character arc for, uh, fuck, what's her name? Uh, Slipping my mind. Daughter, for daughter, or whatever her name is. <laughs> I don't even know if I want her to have one. I feel like she actually does belong in this story as the rock it's like she's she's yeah. something that rick does seem to care about sort of and like at least in in the idea of her he wants to protect yeah. her in general and uh and that's good and then she can you know sit here while her family does crazy stuff around her and be the alcoholic who's totally oblivious yeah. to the things happening and i like know. that I, I appreciate it i feel like this show is in some way running into a danger of like this i because we mm-hmm. are presented with this idea that, like, yeah, Rick will look out for her at least, but, like, he has abandoned one of her yep. in season yep. one when he just, like, left that universe behind. So, like, I don't know. Sometimes like, the, he's the fond show has... of her. He's, like, fond of her, you know? Yeah. I, I feel like this show um, runs into problems with consistency on, like, what Rick mm. will do or can do. Like, yeah. the fact that he yeah. couldn't get them out of the situation much more easily in this episode, especially when he seemed lucid. Like, there are times where Rick fucks up, but it seems like he's just literally, like, in an, um, like, a insane episode, mm-hmm. you know, where, like, his mind has is not working right, and that's why he's not doing it. And I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with, like, Rick's got space dementia. That makes sense to me. Um, or Rick is just um, drunk, you know, or high. Yeah. I'm okay with that. But when it seems like he's completely right of mind, he's in his normal good sense, and yet he's, like, not able to solve what seems like a basic situation, or, like, he's making different moral decisions from what he did earlier in the episode. It's just like, yeah, uh, you're playing a little too close to the fire you there. Know, I, I you know, I hear what you're saying. Um, but, like, so Rick has always had, like, it's been his modus operandi to, like, involve Morty on these, like, extremely, like, pedantic... Uh, adventures to get like yeah. little knickknacks or whatever the fuck that he's trying to do. That is true for whatever. So like, you know, there's there's, I'd say like last episode there was an absolute like power level spike in in Rick's yeah. like mental abilities to like, like he's unmatched completely on every level. No one can do right. anything to this dude. He just completely decimated the entire universe with sheer mental power and uh, like there's no way anything can compete with that. Um, like, if right. he stayed at that level all the time. So I, I think that it, the only way they could do that was to, like, elevate him to that status for an episode. And now we have to swallow a pill that, like, okay, we're, we're going to dial this back a little I bit. Just think, I just think there's a way to avoid ways, it? Like, there, there, I mean, are there stories episode- you can write with him in, like, situations where he just, like, isn't aware, or isn't paying attention, I- things like that? I think so. Like, I mean, if you uh-huh. look at episode one, like, in that whole episode, he's just fucking insane. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. he's, when he makes Ricky, like, uh, uh, when he Ricky. makes Morty wear the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he makes him wear the boots, yeah. like, the gravity boots, like, doesn't explain them properly and stuff like that, you know? And, like, uh-huh. there's there's lots of times where Rick, uh, um, like you said, pedantic adventures, but usually mm-hmm. it's, like, his inattentiveness. Like, um, yeah. In, in the big party episode where he makes Morty go get the Calaxian crystals. And he's right, like, Morty, right. you got to get these crystals. It's super important. And That's a Morty good has one. to go on this whole trick. And he comes back and he just snorts them. And it's just like, it's just crack, you know, yeah, uh, with a yeah. fleeting high. And, like, those moments sell me <laughs> on, like, Rick is just, like, on a different 
plain when it comes to like how he thinks about dan- like risk and reward, yeah. you know? Yeah. This episode didn't sell me on that. This episode mm-hmm. felt like mm-hmm. Rick was completely in his right mind because he was like the straight man this episode. Yeah. Rick yeah. was the straight man in an episode and he yeah, still fucks things up, you know? Usually when he's the straight man, he's like completely in control and like, you know, no Morty, I have a portal gun, dumbass, yeah. you know? Like, Rick, so basically, I guess, there, there's sort of a rule, I guess, about that, that, like, Rick cannot be placed in a situation where he has a clear goal and clear methods of accomplishing that goal. He just, you yeah. can't ever put him in that situation, because right. he should just be able to solve it immediately. It has to be yeah. vague, Yeah, it has to be some, like, weird thing, like when he, uh, when he had to build a business that uncursed items that were cursed by the devil. Yeah. Like, that's perfect. That's exactly right. what this guy and should be doing. And the scene where he just, like, gets tired of it and burns it all down. Yeah, like, that's, that's a Rick that's, move, you know? That, exactly. That's And exactly I understand right. why it happened here. It's because this episode's not about Rick. This is not a Rick episode. Yep, it's yep. completely about Summer and Morty. And so I understand why Rick takes a back seat, but I just think they could have done it more carefully. Like, it was a little yeah. too blatant. Like, I'm, I'm looking too hard at Rick's plot line and going, what? Why is this the B plot? This doesn't make any sense, you know? Yeah, I hear you. Um... Okay, hey, let's talk about uh, how you feel about, like, specifically the, the underlying plot thread of the divorce. You feel like that's moving along? You feel like we're going any- anywhere with that in general? Yeah, I feel like the kids resolved their feelings for it, and maybe maybe this is the last we'll see of Jerry for a while. That's what I was you wondering, know? yeah, yeah. Um, it, it felt like a natural progression from the previous episode, mm-hmm. and it felt like the show was really trying to reassure me that, like, Look, we have things to say about Jerry, but we're not bringing him back. He's not, like, still a major character. I felt like they were bending over backwards to reassure me, look, this is just about the kids dealing with their feelings towards Jerry. He's He is really gone. Mm-hmm. That's really a thing. <laughs> like, look, they're not trying to get him back. They've all come to terms with him being gone. Believe me, he's not coming back. And I'm like, all right, all right, you've convinced me. I'm glad. I'm glad you've convinced me. That you farewell know. scene with Summer, I think if I understood what was going on, what was was intended i think would have been a good sort of farewell scene for jerry for a yeah. while and we can just leave it at that for for a good yeah. while Anyone unfortunately it was confusing yeah <laughs> somebody tell me in the comments what the fuck they meant because i do not understand what what was going on so summer gave a you know what never mind yeah just tell me just just tell me yeah and there's a there's plenty of moments at this episode that i thought were pretty cool uh summer shooting the car and it flipping over her and then rick just being like okay that was cool you know like yeah i love when <laughs> my favorite rick moments are when he just appreciates the world around him and what other people are doing yeah um and uh the ending scene again like where where the whole society turns into just like modern society now granted I thought the the actual conversation between Summer and Buckethead guy was weak. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't think it was funny. I got what they were doing, yeah, but it wasn't, yeah. like, funny, joke-wise. But the entire scene as a concept was definitely a great idea. Like, I laughed really hard just when I saw her, like, driving up to the place, and I was just like, oh my god, they fucking did it. <laughs> you yeah. Know? I think this, uh, yeah, like, that character really fell victim to... Is is nepotism the right word? I feel like because he's buddies with Maybe. this guy, he gave him a role yeah. and gave him a whole bunch of lines and made sure nothing bad happened to him and gave him a bunch of silly stuff like, "Oh, your mustache! You're such a weird, quirky yeah. character." Like that. I mean, really... Jonah Kill's a great actor, but this character not, sucked. Dick. Not cast well. He was here. written poorly yeah. and yeah, acted badly, and everything about this character was really annoying. Uh, yeah, uh, he, uh, this character should have fucking died by the end or something. I mean, fucking Summer should have blown off his fucking head at the end. Like, that would have been, I don't know, uh, cool or something. Uh, that's a little unnecessary. All right, I guess that's unnecessary. I, it but was <laughs> funny, it was funny enough that Rick took the stone and damned that whole civilization I, back to what it was before, I'm just but... annoyed by the fact that nothing bad happened to this character, and I could sense <laughs> that that was going to be him from the second he was, he was, like, revealed to be... I don't know. I, he, he was just obvious that this guy was, like, above everybody else. It, it annoyed me. He, he felt protected by, by fucking plot armor. That's what he felt like. I felt plot armor on this character, and it annoyed me. Because he wasn't funny, and nothing good came of him. Other than being yeah. married to Summer for that one joke that dragged on too long and got annoying anyway. Well, that's about all I have to say about the episode. Yeah. You uh, you said all you had? I, I think overall, so. Overall, I thought it was a... 
it was good. It was not like a great Rick and Morty episode. It's not one that's gonna like keep me rewatching it the way the first three episodes of season two did. Yeah. Or the first episode of season three, like, you know, it's just one of those like, yeah, all right, you know, I won't skip it in a rewatch of the show, but it's not not incredible. I uh, agree. I think I like it a little bit less than you in general. Uh, I really thought, I don't know, something about the humor wasn't wasn't doing it for me as much as consistently. And really all this is relative to, to Rick and Morty being like the best show ever. It's just, right. it just didn't, you know, live up to that bar for me on that front the whole time. Some of it was great, like we said. Um, I'd, I'd give it a, 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 a okay. It was okay to good, I guess. A light yeah. okay, decent, good, whatever. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, that's it, folks. Come back next week. See you then, buddy. Bye-bye.